Hey, uh, could you speak a little bit to Travis? Uh, last year at this time in the first seven games, he had not scored a touchdown, and now he's got seven and seven games. On a, on a pro level, is there a an art to finding the end zone, especially red zone, goal line situations? And what's, what has tra Travis learned over that time? You know, I think uh, you, you got to <sighs> – I put a lot of credit, you know, with the offensive line, especially inside the five. Um, that's kind of where it starts. And and then and then one of the things that TJ does is he knows how to get small. He knows how to get skinny, as they say, uh, down inside the, you know, the the two, the one, those goal line plays. And, and you know, which is nice, too, that he's also scoring from further out, um, you know, where he's breaking tackles. And we saw that. You know, um, the Buffalo game, we saw that Indianapolis, things like that. But, um, you know, Trevor's just done a nice job of just, you know, anticipating where the hole is going to be um, and and squeezing through there. You know, sometimes there is a little bit of an art of of knowing, you know, how to ride that wave of offensive linemen into the end zone. And then you just mentioned the offensive line. No quarterback hits. Trevor wasn't touched uh, last night. Cameron Jordan was pretty much neutralized given all that the offensive line has been through with the injuries and the reshuffling of the lineup and everything. The short yardage situations aside in the fourth quarter, how is that performance to you? To me, that's, uh, it's one of the best performances, you know, um, I, I had talked to the team and, 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 you know, we, we had some guys that were, were beat up. Trevor was, was banged up going into the game. You know, Brandon Sheriff was, was beat up going into this game uh, amongst other guys. And, you know, the offensive line really put it upon themselves to keep keep Trevor clean in the pocket. You know, other than the the runs that he had, you know, he wasn't he wasn't touched back there. And and um, I give credit to Press Taylor. Um, you know, play calls balls were coming out of his hand extremely quick. You know, uh, receivers were doing their job, so it was a it was a really good you know really good performance there, not only by the offensive line, but I think also the guys around Trevor uh, helping him out. You know, in that situation. Thank you. You bet. All right, we're going to go to Hayes and then uh, Mark next. Hey, Doug, congratulations on the win. The uh, offense only had two penalties for 10 yards. What uh, Can you describe how well they were able to handle the operation playing in such a difficult environment? Yeah, and it was loud. Um, and, again, credit, you know, credit the guys. We, we worked on the silent cadence all week. Um, you know, it's something that, you know, we, we definitely pride ourselves on, on controlling the line of scrimmage with cadence, you know? Um, and, and so when you go into environments like that, you know, it's, a uh, it, it, we try to, we try to use it as a weapon, you know, for us, but, uh, credit the guys for not, uh, you know, no false starts, things of that nature. Um, and really, playing a clean game. That, that's, that's another part of, you know, what we talk about during the week when you're on the road, you know, uh, no, no penalties, try to try to minimize some of the mistakes. And uh, again, credit, credit the guys for, for really focusing in and, and doing a nice job there. Is Trevor getting to the point where he can use the cadence, like some of the more established experienced quarterbacks that have been doing this for a dozen or so years as starters in the NFL? Yeah, he's um, you know, we we if you if you remember the Buffalo game, we had that that one drive where, you know, we got them to jump off sides, created some first downs for us. And, you know, obviously we're getting more comfortable with with the different cadences that we have. And it's something we gotta continue. We use it as a as it's a it's a weapon for the offense, right? And um, you know, again, it's uh all other 10 guys on offense have to focus in on the cadence. They gotta be smart about it. And um, definitely, definitely Trevor is uh, using everything in his, in his, you know, in his power to, uh, um, you know, keep defenses uh, guessing just a little bit at the snap. Awesome. Thank you. You bet. Hey, Doug, with uh, Trevor Etienne, back to Trevor a little bit. Travis Etienne, sorry, Trevor plays in here in Gainesville. Yeah. Uh, Travis Etienne. How sustainable he leads the NFL in touches of 127. How sustainable is his workload or, and do you need to get maybe some of those other guys involved? Yeah. I mean, you know, Travis, Travis is a tough kid and, you know, we're, we've seen that over the course of last year for the start of this year. And, and yeah, we've got to be mindful that um, we're not overworking him. You know uh, we got to get tank and Dearness and, 
And if Jamichael's up, we got to get those guys involved in the offense and, and uh, you know, get them some more touches right now. Um, especially on third down, we like, we like TJ, you know, on third down and, and uh, from not only from a protection standpoint, but the ability to, to catch the ball out of the backfield. And, you know, we just, we just got to keep the other guys coming. And it's not that we don't have confidence in them. We just feel like, you know, Trevor or TJ rather has the, has the hot hand and, and we, we continue to keep him going, but yeah, we're definitely mindful of, uh, you know, the wear and tear on, on his body as we go. And then anything with Ridley in terms of, like, was it maybe just uh, not hooking up or the fact that you're trying to get rid of the, you know, he's more of a down the field guy and you're trying to get rid of the ball super quick to protect Trevor there? Yeah, it was just a, it's one of those games where, you know, yeah, we, we you know, we see Calvin as more of a deep threat, obviously, um, but he he is good in the short to, to, to you know, intermediate area as well. And, and uh, last night, you know, they rolled some coverage his way. So they, they, they clouded some coverage, they inverted some coverage his way. You know, they did a nice job of, you know, sort of, sort of neutralizing Calvin. Um, you know, we, we still have to, you know, try to get him involved and, and get him, you know, more opportunities to catch football, but, you know, Hey, listen, you got to credit the defense sometimes too. They, they know when you have a weapon on offense and if they can, if they can neutralize it, you know, um, advantage them. So uh, credit the saints for doing that, but, um, you know, Calvin's in a really good place. He's, he's a big part of the offense, obviously. And um, we're going to continue to find ways to get him the ball. All right, we're going to go to Jamal and then John Shipley. Hey, Coach, uh, any update on Andre Cisco or any other injuries from last night? Um, not, actually, not at this time. You know, we got back so early in the morning that, that the medical uh, team pushed everything back, you know, this morning. So uh, definitely have something over the weekend that we can release to you. But, you know, Cisco was more precautionary. Um, you know, there were there, he was cramping. He cramped the week before. Uh, he was cramping a little bit and, and it just didn't didn't loosen up enough on him. So uh, in his hamstring. So we just we just kept him out of that football game. Trevor. Uh, came out of the game extremely well um, on the knee, and um, you know this will be a good good couple of days here for him to rest and heal and and uh, get some more treatment on it. Brandon Sheriff came out really really good, uh, no setbacks with him. Again, just you know uh, the timing of of this is good for for these guys to get the extra rest. And then you know we kept Zay Jones and Walker Little back, Christian Braswell back, you know in in Jacksonville uh, last night just to just to continue their rehab and treatment and. Um, expect Walker and Zay to, to maybe get on the practice field this next week. So, um, you know, uh, we're doing okay injury front. We just, you know, we're nicked up right now, banged up a little bit, uh, but this is a good time for this little mini buy. And how difficult has this last three game stretch been from London to Jacksonville to New Orleans on a short week? How difficult has that been on the players and, and just on, on planning? You know, it's a, it's a challenge because um, you're, 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 you're crossing, you're crossing about five different time zones, you know, to, to get to, from, from Jacksonville to London and back. And, and um, you know, you, you go back to October 1st when we had our first Wembley game uh, to, to last night, you know, it was 19, 19 days or so you're playing four ball games and, and that's extremely hard on the, on the guys, you know, um, and coaches and players, because the coaches are, you know, grinding here at the office and putting the game plans together. And then the, the players making sure from my standpoint, making sure they're, they're rested as well as they can be. And, um, but yet still getting the the preparation in. And so my, my, my credit goes to the players for how they handled the last, you know, three weeks and, and really um, locked in, you know, to, to whether we were doing a walkthrough or a full practice, you know, the mental side of the game and, and, uh, you know, there's still obviously some mistakes out there being made, but but overall, from a team perspective, definitely pleased with with how they've handled, you know, the last, uh, you know, three, three and a half weeks. And how different does this season right now feel than maybe this time a year ago? Last year, you couldn't buy a win in October. This year, you haven't you've been able to kind of win your games in October. How different does it feel this time of year with the team? Uh, thanks for reminding me. Um, uh, you know, it's definitely different, obviously. I mean, we're 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 further down the line, you know, um, I, even though we're young, I still, I feel like we're a veteran team been around each other now, you know, a year and a half. And um, again, it's a credit to the players, you know, that it's, it's the resiliency. It's the, it's the no quit mentality. Um, you know, we're, we're in it to the end, obviously. Um, and, 
you know, it's, it's definitely different. We're, we're excited. We're happy where we are, you know, obviously some, some, some really good football teams that we've played and had success and, but yet there's still, you know, we're still what seven games in and, and uh, 10 more to go. So, you know, it's uh, still a long season. Thanks coach. Thank you. Hey coach. Appreciate you doing this. Can, can you just talk a little bit about, Buster's, you know, start last night, not just the last play, but it seemed like he had two big plays in the end zone there. It's really first extended snaps. Yeah, you know, Buster, you know, it's the reason reason why we we took him a year ago and and uh got him on our team. We we like we like his skill set. He, he's a long corner. Um, you know, and 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 he just obviously you can see some of the some of the 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 lack of experience, let's call it, you know, out there, but but you know what? Um, he played tough. He played physical. He made some tackles. Uh, the obviously the fourth down in the end zone at the end, you know, was was huge. And and just it's just a it's going to give him a lot of confidence moving forward. You know, um, he, we all know what Tyson, who Tyson Campbell is, and and he, obviously he's our guy. But to have solid backup players that can fill in and and step up, it's just exactly what I was talking to the team about. You know, the next man up mentality, and we got to fill in the gap. And and listen. Uh, Mike Caldwell did a nice job calling the game because we helped we helped Buster a little bit with the state with safety help and and things of that nature, um, you know. But but just just really pleased with uh, with how Buster played in, in that environment. That's a that's an extremely you know tough environment to go in there and and of course they've got you know Olave and, and Michael Thomas and and you know some really good skill athletes out there and and he held up he held up nicely. And then last one for me, Doug, it seems like Fourier and Devin Lloyd, like as a duo, are just like really kind of hitting their stride. Can you talk about their play the last couple of weeks yeah. and especially last night? Yeah. You know, I, I, what I see with Devin, um, talk to him about him first. Devin is the game's slowing down for him, which is a good thing, right? He's seeing things well. He's not overreacting and, and running, running himself, you know, past gaps. You know, we all know his, his speed and physicality and he's really just settled in and, and, um, doing a really good job, you know, really, really good job. Foyer's the Foyer's the leader out there. He gets guys lined up. Um, happy for him with the pick six last night. That was a that was a huge play. It was really the deciding, probably factor in that football game. Um, you know, and and he can't say enough good things. I mean, this is the reason why we 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 took him. You know, a year ago, you know, from Atlanta and got him in here. And and you're you're starting to see uh, exactly who he is uh, as a leader. And um, uh, obviously as a football player and he's, he's all over the field, making a ton of tackles. So it's really been a good duo. Uh, they communicate well. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, exciting to see these two guys uh, playing, playing this well together. Thanks Doug. Appreciate it. You bet. All right, go ahead, uh, John. And then we're going to finish up with Brent. All right. Uh, uh, Doug. Not to bring up last year again, but you talked so much at the beginning of the season about learning how to win. Um, is this sort of what that looks like? Uh, pretty opposite results, obviously. Uh, definitely um, a product of learning how to win, you know, and, and uh, it, it last year we probably, you know, um, would have made an effort, but maybe come up short in a game like this, you know, and, and now what we've been able to accomplish at the end of last season and, and the first part of this season is these guys are, you know, they're, they're locked in for 60 minutes. They know it's going to come down to the wire there. They're, and, and really anymore, there's really no, there's no blowout type games in the NFL anymore. You know, the, the scores are always going to be close. Teams are too good. Um, but our team is learning, learning that, and they're learning how to play, how to play together. Um, you know, it's amazing too how, how nothing really shocks this team. Um, whether you're up, you know, 14, 17, you know, or down 14 or 10. I mean, these guys just continue to play and, and, and somewhere somebody's going to make a play. And and that's, that's what I ask them to do. You know, we, we don't go chasing plays. We, we just make the ones that come to us and that's what the guys are doing right now. And so um, learning how to win. Um, I think our guys are, are figuring that out and um, it's, it's good to see. Thanks Doug. You bet. Doug, uh, seems like uh, maybe a little bit of a weird question considering you won four in a row, but um, are you at all frustrated with some of the stalling on offense and where's the ceiling for like how much more do you guys have that you're not doing? 
Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's frustration. It's just, it's just something that, you know, we've got to continue to work through. Um, I think again, that's, it, it goes back to John's question about learning how to continuing to win. I mean, that's, you, you just can't have those letdowns and those lulls in football games and, and, but look, I get you give credit to your opponents too, right? They continue to play, and um, they they've been they've been coached to play for sixty minutes as well. Um, and, and this is why I use phrases like "everything matters" um, because every play every play matters in a football game. And um, you know, we've got to continue to to work on that. We got to continue to you know, uh, as coaches, look at those lulls and see if there's something we can do different. Um, you know, schematically. And then, and then ultimately it's the players, the players, the ultimate focus, ultimate concentration, you know, for the entire game. And, and that's a tough thing to do, uh, especially when you're in that environment on a short week, it gets a little bit, you know, the fatigue begins to set in, you know, a uh, second half of the football game. And, and first thing to go is your, is your mind, but um, all things that we're learning as a team together and uh, we continue to work on. Can you uh, take us through the fake punt? A little bit. Logan mentioned that it was on. It got called off by the line, and then he he saw it, and Tim saw it. Is is that kind of how it went down? About how it went down, yeah. Uh, as fakes would go, it didn't come off very clean, other than uh, the the result. But um, yeah, it was it was a it was a design. You know, we had the way the the Saints punt return unit would play. We wanted to get our gunners. Um, on you know on the moves we had a we had a little short motion that we wanted to get them on the run where they we could snap it and then it, it, it helps the gunner get down the field right with a little short motion and we had a particular play that we were bringing tim in that short motion and then he was going to sell like he was going to take off you know towards the punt returner and then he was going to spin out back to the sideline and then logan was just going to uh flip it out there but there was a little bit of miscommunication because they started out in a, in a double vice and then the inside guy began to creep in. And so Tim didn't know if it was still on or if it was off, but it was on because Dewey gave him the, the heel for motion. And, you know, so formationally we were a little, little off. Um, but, uh, you know, if you look at Logan, Logan caught the ball and, and hesitated just a little bit, but then saw the fact that the, the, the single gunner bailed and, uh, and, and threw Tim the ball. So, it wasn't exactly how we worked it in practice, but, um, you know, um, sometimes you love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Last one, if you don't mind, uh, in high, looking back at the tape, did, uh, do you think Calvin caught the ball on the sideline? You know, I, um, no, no. And it was confirmed upstairs too. Um, so I, it's, it's hard. I mean, it was a heck of a catch, obviously. I mean, you know, even from my vantage point on the sideline, it, it appeared that he he might have got like his shin down, you know, inbounds, uh, that knee. But, uh, uh, you know, the Hawkeye system, uh, you know, looked at it, ruled why and they did the same thing on the third and one and the fourth and one, you know, and that's why I didn't challenge those either. Uh, because when I get confirmation from upstairs, it's pretty much out of my hands at that point.